Hello. Ha. Yeah. yeah uh, so one quick disclaimer: this knowledge, uh, whatever I'm sharing with you, it belongs to you. So I'm just a medium, and after 25 minutes, it will belong to you forever. So what you do is totally up to you. It's a very very different session. I always pray this is post lunch because normally it sends some kind of a shock waves. So it it will also help you to keep awake. So I'll go ahead. Uh, it's been a, a fantastic research journey. What I'm sharing is nothing to do with the work which I'm doing. Of course, I'm trying to create an influencing lobby uh, uh, indoors within Jio as well. And there's something very contextual to who we were as India about 5,000 years ago. And of course, the examples are from various other places as well. So there are two possible lenses through which you will analyze this. One is prejudice, and other is skepticism. Within prejudice, you have two type of prejudices uh, where you know something like this exists, completely 100% all by your heart, which is the right hand side quadrant, or a prejudice which is you believe nothing like this exists. Now there is a space in between which is called as skepticism. Uh, as per my own survey results over the last 10 years, uh, there are about 10 to 15 percent of people who now belong to that area, right? Uh, not too sure, you know, what would the audience mix be like out here. So uh, just two points, this belonged to you, I'm the medium, it's now reaching you, maybe in 2023, at some other point of time, it will reach you again, right? This is an interactive session, so I'll ask you to do a few task, uh, tasks here. Uh, this is about a human brain, how do we absorb things and what happens if we let the data go deep inside our brain. So just be a little sport, I'll ask you to do something. I would say, expect at least, you know, 50, 60% of you to, you know, kindly step ahead and do that, but sitting uh, there right now. Now, since uh, this is the post lens session, we're starting in a different way. Uh, we need to bioenergize ourselves. Uh, by, do, by saying so, I mean uh, we just need to quickly energize ourselves as that more oxygen reaches the flow. I request all of you to just keep your pen and paper down for a while, please. Right? And I'll, I'm just enacting something. You just please enact after me, and after that, I'll request you to close your eyes. Okay? Just shake your hands, please. Let's just do that. And it sounds like a little meditative session, right? Just don't do like this, else you will be hitting the partner in the next. Just go up in case if your suits allow that. Just do that, please. Little more harder. Little more harder. Excellent. Now, as you're doing this, just close your eyes. Close your eyes, right? And stop shaking. Keep your hands on your thighs, facing upwards. Just have a couple of deep breaths. Post, you'll open your eyes. I'll expose you to some words which I'll request you to memorize. I'll give you about a few seconds for that. Post that, we'll go through some more images. Allow yourself to just go through that flow and then we'll see what happens deep inside the subconscious mind when we are exposed to these. You can open your eyes now. Please memorize. You have about 30 seconds to memorize. They are exactly 30 words. request all the toppers not to write down on piece of paper, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the benefit of the audience, I am speaking only in English because I have been made aware there are a few people who don't understand Hindi. Okay. Now, few seconds to memorize five images. I'll give a little more time here. Okay. 
allow that data to go inside your brain. Try and resist this little activity of not writing anything on piece of paper. It's very, very common for us, particularly the ones who are rank holders, top one to five, it's very, very common. Again, this is coming from some data. So uh, why this session? So there's this true story. Uh, this is about the year 2000. Eight, I was teaching in an advertising college and I gave a small film assignment to students there, the entire batch. And this was about you need to do a character plot sketch and a script for a 30-second PVC. Uh, this was for a housing client. Uh, this was actually LIC Housing Finance. And the objective was to come out with a plot. Their objective was very, very simple. Which all characters will play in their advertisement? What they came after, I think, end of three hours, sent a little shockwave to me because that was the thing which a creative fraternity had given where uh, husband was working, wife was housewife. It had kid, mainly boy, 98% of students had a boy kid with these names which you see in the front, Rahul, Rohan, Aryan, and age group between four to five. Now what was very, very peculiar was everybody had selected a boy child and it started a little, you know, curious yatra in my own sense where we started finding out why something like this happened. Neither religion taught, neither schools taught, neither society taught that you need to have a boy child, but why and from where this message was coming. So I went on my own research between a long time, 2008, and started documenting at least what was the most frequent media exposure, which was TV ad advertisements in terms of print and, and in TVCs as well. And what I came out with, again, was a very interesting data. If you can just quickly read out here, 84% TVCs aired had uh, a boy child as the lead protagonist. 78% commercials showed only three to four member team, which is again a husband, wife, and possibly a two children. Only 6% barely to 8% had grandparents in them. And this is what we were absorbing. And uh, particularly the, uh, I would say the grooming segment of hair oil, shampoos, they only had a female. Uh, protagonist, which is a girl child again between four to seven, all very fair looking. Now, this is just the context of this presentation where there were a bunch of educated students who just preferred a boy child in their TV commercial, and this is what we were absorbing then. I'm not kind of connecting the dots here, this is just the start. We need to see a lot more. We'll go ahead. Now, this is a very quick overview of overall how the biases are formed. It's more textual in nature. I'll spend very less time here. These are the things that we do ourselves just hand practice, uh, uh, memory uh, kind of retains that data. Second is experiences with the living being, the way we uh, meet each other, our parents, friends, society, right? The third quadrant is involuntary observations, which is quite very obvious here. You are doing multitasking, three, four things at a time. Song is playing in the background. You don't even know what lyrics is, but it's going inside your brain. The way it happened a few minutes ago of this 30 words going inside, right? Now, this is where the subjectivity of prejudice versus skepticism start. Few people believe, few people don't believe. The choice is yours, and the knowledge will also be yours from today onwards. Inheritance from parents, subconscious learning inside mother's womb. Uh, uh, the soul enters technically around four and a half months into the womb, and that is when the movement starts, and uh, that is when the learning also starts. Experiences from dream. Now, the other part, these three ones on the top are typically related to the rebirth theory. You believe, it's fine. If you don't believe, that's also fine. So experiences we carry from our past to birth. In Sai Satcharitra, Sai Baba has mentioned this term as prarab, where the previous two lives of data that you carry uh, on your spine, plus this life of data which you're also documenting. Just construct yourself as a pen drive for now. You're just downloading the data out there. Deep-rooted craving and aversion from previous lives. Uh, this is again, uh, uh, I would say a topic which is settled very well by the Vipassana Center, where you pull out these cravings and aversions from your body. Original software of God, you can call it, love, compassion. And our session is experiences from non-sensory. This is what I'm effectively talking about. This is a quick overview of how we learn or pick up things. Now we'll enter into something which is the sensory and the non-sensory part of the message transmission to human brain. So this is how most of our life, we believe, is, is gone in learning. So somebody is saying something or doing something and we're picking. So it's like you understand the language, you understand the person. Right, uh, you are abled enough to hear the sound and you'll pick up a message. This is level one. This space is called as extrasensory, where the visuals are involved, but you're still getting a message. It depends as a human being or as a gender, how do you want to absorb that, right? So 
you got the message there it was angry threat intimidating in case one and other could be depending on you know what condition you are in what age group you are in you will decipher that in a different way right now there is a space which also exists in between which is called as a medium like so there is a creator of a message there is a receiver of a message and there is a medium as well now we'll start going a little deep into the medium part right so for that i'll narrate a story and this is a true story i heard that uh, while attending a lecture of bk uh, sister bk shivani uh, from brahm kumaris uh, so there was a camp happening in mount abu and uh, there had a bunch of merchants who had come from surat and they were attending this camp and one particular person uh, invariably for three consecutive days was having a dream that he is roaming around in the streets of surat and he didn't have 15000 rupees in his hand and he wanted to take up a small shanty which is a because it is a small low cost affordable housing and he got worried he met the teacher and uh, he asked is this my future and the teacher also didn't know incidentally the teacher who is the sister on the same evening was talking to the cook and the cook seemed quite worried and she asked what happened and the cook narrated uh, uh, didi uh, my landlord has asked me to vacate my shanty and i need 15000 rupees and for the last one week i have been struggling with that amount now that lady incidentally was cooking with that thought right and for now just hold this uh, for a while that somebody was cooking with some thoughts the thought went into the food and then food when consumed by that person possibly got deciphered in the in that particular manner of course there is a lot of subjectivity around the story as well but i'll talk that later and we'll go now deep into this particular pattern whether what is the scientific relevance of that right so the scientific relevance came from dr masaru emoto who was studying the behavior of water with respect to human emotions and this is again a true story where two villages were at war just like we have two states at war on on a water resource and they wanted to settle that amicably so one a particular village were deep into meditation they what they started doing was they were charging the water which is a common pool of water with compassion and love and gradually when the other team started also consuming that it affected them so i'll show you some examples out there so what you see on the left is is a regular water crystal before the prayers and what you see on the right is a regular water crystal after the prayer and they came up with astonishing data which is around how water molecules and the structure also relate to different leaks or in different type of emotions and prayers so if you see the silver ones the golden ones xyz and all you can easily look look this up right so this is from here we are now entering human emotions going into a material stuff which is like water and water recording that data right now i'll roll back several years ago to the natya shastra this came as part of my research when i published a paper in 2015 on why we lost the value of hum aesthetics particularly in indian society i stumbled upon this theory called the rasa theory or the natya shastra incidentally while we know about this navarasa theory many few of us know that there are colors associated with each emotion now going deeper we came across data there were people in those era fourth century where could physically see those colors and a scientific evidence of that in a mystical form is also mentioned in a book called celestine prophecy by james redfield where monks monks could possibly see what kind of a emotion is coming out of human body and they can actually see that color so now how do we believe this is fourth century is true we now roll back to something like 2023 was fortunate enough to attend a session in 2006 by reiki healing foundation where they got hold of an old technology called skrillian photography did their own spin got it patented it's available now and they capture these aura colors and you'll find stark similarity between what was spoken in natya shastra in fourth century versus what we have now available as a scientific evidence right so i'll skip yeah this is what is important so any land per se or any room which has got through series of turmoils and generations of turmoil wars blood baths uh, torture everything it kind of sto- soaks up that data and if you step on that land invariably that data also comes to you we don't know about it and we'll go a little more deeper so this is called as a hot soil and cold soil and this is one of the fundamental reasons we enter into some space and we suddenly feel quite relaxed in but in other areas we don't feel that relaxed right now we'll find something whether all this is good but is there profitability connected in case if i have good emotions if i had you know xyz factor is it really good so this is a very very uh, interesting experiment by brahma kumari it's called as yogic farming they got hold up among seven universities only three are uh, two are mentioned out here and they invented techniques 
a new way to counter the chemical farming and also the organic farming. So what they do is, they, dis they, they decided the entire cycle into several steps. So I'll only speak about one, which is the seed germination part, where they talk to the seed for three months. Two to three months, group of meditators, they just collect together. They talk to the seed and they almost speak to the seed as in, it's like taking birth. What value the seed will have in humanity is almost like you're talking to a kid who is just about three years old. They do that, then they sit again in the field and everything is orchestrated. They talk to insects, rodents. They don't use any of the chemical fertilizers, neither any pesticides. They talk to insects and they ask them very politely to leave their fields and this kind of working. But what was more astonishing and important was when people went to the market and they, they conducted this study between the chemical farming, the organic and the yogic farming, people were invariably drawn to the basket of fruits and vegetables which were grown with that love and compassion which is the yogic farming. So this is one of these unknown things which work in our human biology where we got attracted to something which is good. Now remember you as a childhood, you always had a favorite uncle or auntie with whom, with whom you felt quite safe, who never judged you. That's a power of attraction that we are referring to. So this is like good emotions means profitability. Now, the question is, do we need any bother about these unseen emotions or messages? We are about 68% water. We are talking about water getting affected. I am about 70-80% water, whatever it is, right? So maybe, I guess, yes, there is something like the emotions which are from somewhere else are also getting stocked up in my body. Now, this is uh, an old one overall. You can just know about it, that why we had all these rituals. We used to pray before we eat. Uh, uh, prayer rooms were next, uh, sorry, kept next to the kitchen areas and waters and rituals. And we never talked during eating because if you are talking about a horrible episode, that emotion will also go into the food. Of course, I mean, uh, al always refer to Dr. Masaru Emoto over there uh, for the reference to how water crystals get affected by human emotions. Now, there are other form of unseen messages as well. Uh, I'll only briefly talk about it, only in one. This is very, very scary. This, I request you humbly not to just tread upon this path. It, has, it had very adverse effect on my own nervous system when I was researching it. I can't explain in detail. I'll only speak about one, which is synesthesia. So it's like there are, suppose I want you to taste a good burger, which is, let's say for now, a vegetarian burger, but you don't want to eat that. So I create a sound. And that sound, when understood by the human system in the cognitive way, it pr will produce a hormone which will have a, a corresponding effect on other sense, which is my tongue. So this is one sense data getting comprehended, mixed up in brain process, and then communicating to other sense. This is synesthesia. So and all of this is, is what the modern technology is researching. And uh, V2K is particularly more important for warfare because they are uh, now uh, contemplating particularly the people, I won't name nations or something, where they are speculating, in case can we ask people to give up their arms and ammunition without putting up a fight? What kind of a radio frequency wave I have to send uh, to their nervous system, which the nervous system comprehends, but your cognitive mind doesn't comprehend. Right. Now, processing everything in between till now, human emotions, they are electrical charge, they travel by air, they travel by water as a medium, and they get comprehended by you. Many cases, we don't feel what is happening. Right? Okay. Now, are biases really bad? That's a question. And is human biology who doesn't comprehend or capture this is really, really bad? So we'll have a quick test. Uh, I'll show you an image just for one second, and we'll try and talk. I understand the topic is heavy. I can see from the faces, but that's what the post lens session is about, right? To keep you awake, right? So I'll show you something, and then we'll quickly talk. And because we'll be less on time, I respect uh, you know few people can just you know say about it. Less than second. What was there in the image? There was a field. There is a bike. Okay. There were six children. Was it Bandra or was it somewhere in in Uttar Pradesh? Possibly UP. Was it India or Russia? Okay. Was it a male driving or a female driving? Were they all wearing helmets? Okay. Were they college students or school students? Okay. Was bike going left to right or right to left? Okay. Was all children dressed in the same dress? Okay. This is a bit of a no. Okay. Was it an urban situation or it was a village landscape? Day or night? Raining or not raining? 
Yeah. So if I go on like this for next half an hour, the power of a human brain is it comprehended, processed everything in that less than one second. So there must be something genius about this biology that we carry, which flashes and I would uh, uh, rather say publishes or processes the data so damn fast. What was the logic? So the logic is this. We inherited something which is called as the limbic brain, which is the reptilian brain which our ancestors had when they used to stay in jungles. So over the evolution, our Android that we get when we take birth is about 80% of that original software for our, from our ancestors who used to survive in those hostile conditions. And there's a reason why this was so important because they had to, uh, their worry was not 2G, 5G, right? Their worry was something else and everything was around survival factor. So just take this case. Even in case if I show you this, what, what is an answer? We say it's a tiger. How many of has had face-to-face -face interaction with tiger multiple times a day or possibly in last, you know, 30, 40 years? Not even once, right? Even in case if we don't know, right? We know it's a tiger, right? Whether it's this format or this, right? That image is deeply embedded in our psyche. That's why we have this fear for spiders, you know, snakes and everything. Though none of us have been bitten by a spider. Now I'll show you something and ask you what is this? Do we have an answer? We interact with this object every 20, 30 minutes. We don't have an answer because it's not recorded in brain. Secondly, it's not treated as a threat data in our brain. Hence, it's not there. So what about it? We don't have any impression in our brain for any water bottle from a top angle. We only have impressions in the front angle because it's not a threat actor. That data never got recorded. Now, from this, it's very, very clear the brain, what it does, it, it trashes 99% of the data, which is considered as non-threatening. And hence, learning is very difficult in human society. That's why we have to repeat time and again, right? And we'll see some evidence uh, quite soon. Now, this is the time. Uh, pick up your pen and paper. Draw the first two diagrams which you are able to recollect and write as many words that you are able to recall. Yeah, the graphic line diagrams. How are we doing on time? Uh, the timekeepers. Uh, no, no, I mean, uh, uh, how far I'm away from consuming my slot of eloquent 20 minutes. It, we are almost last in two, three minutes. We are done. Yeah. OK, we have time. I also apologize, this is something which I cover in a seven day workshop. And um, this was about designers and why designers are important because we are creators, right? Sometimes uh, I hope, I mean, you'll capture some part of that today, not complete, right? That we have a responsibility towards society as well. Okay, uh, just randomly people, they can just raise hands when they are done with their diagrams and number of words, okay? How many words, sir? Number, just total count, words. Six words, okay. Can we have the word counts more from the audience, please? How many are built? Eight, fantastic. What else? Anybody going above 10? 10, fantastic. Okay. Okay, you're a very honest audience. So I've, uh, this I've been teaching for the last now almost like five years. So uh, there are few in the audience who have counts going up to 16 to 25, right? So uh, as per the survey again, uh, they were the rank holders and there are no offenses to rank holders. So they got into this mental competition with themselves and they forgot about the rest of the session and they started memorizing it even when I was talking something else. Right, so there, are, there, there is a story plot story as well uh, where you put all the words together. Okay, how many diagrams you could recollect? Can you just look around your table uh, what people have drawn because I really can't come. Okay, yeah. How many of you have driven AT and T? Okay, right. And the W shaped. Okay, right. Now in the words, how many of you had Salman Khan in the bung? So that's called as pattern making and pattern breaking, right? Uh, even in case if I would have rendered one text like Tumblr bold, still you would have caught hold of that word, Salman Khan and the monk, because that process is called as cognition, recognition, and recall, right? And then comes the action part of it. 
Now, what is important here is most of you would actually end up this. This is what happens to designers. Whatever we are absorbing, like in the case of that advertising student story, we just, sorry for the word, puke it out, right? And we then struggle to actually innovate for our clients and services like the most um, common obvious response we normally give in case if a resign problem has to be delivered in five or six days, right? Okay. This is an important one. This is called as Atkins True Brain, uh, True Brain Theory. This is what I did to you. So we have three boxes. The first is the sensory buffer for 250 millisecond. It just holds our data for that point. So whatever I'm doing for the last 10 minutes, pressing this button to walking from here to there, it's I who is doing that. But my memory has no recall of that because in 250 milliseconds, it got pushed out. Few data from the threat perspective or from some other perspective, because if you remember in limbic brain, there are three quadrants. The biology ensures that you are survived by food, reproduction, and threat. These are three actors. So invariably, any data which is around that scope, right? if somebody slapped you, somebody hit you, said something in the meeting, it will go and start repeating more than 15 to 20 seconds. And in few cases, if the bashing had been really high, it will go to the next quadrant. And the first quadrant in long-term memory called as a recent memory. right? Recent memory holds the data just for about I would say one day roughly, and that's the recent memory data through which India survived in exams. You remembered a geography lessons the day before, and then it kind of stayed with you for about you know 10, 12 hours, and then a new data got planted on top of that, and you forgot that data, right? That is why repetition, which is what we do for national anthems or for tables, right? The advantage and disadvantage of LTM is only one, and that is one of the reasons I think we have having human conflicts. Anything which goes in your long-term memory cannot be erased. Unless and until it's like a Bollywood style. You get hit and then you, you know, lose your consciousness, something like that. Else it won't be there. It, f it will stay with you forever. And depending on what quality of data you had, it will also get transmitted in case if you believe in the rebirth theory in your consecutive birth, which is a pending task you'll have to do, right? So we are almost at the end now. This is the concluding slide. There's something called a swabhav, which is your nature, you as a designer, and there's something called a swadharma, which is the nature of your work. The conflict that we are having right now is if you by default are an aggressive person, it's very natural. Somebody is very calm, somebody is very passionate, right? Right? And your product or service that you're working on is absolutely the reverse way around. You're working for a let's say, hospital care system and you are innately very aggressive. Your food is aggressive, your music is aggressive, your driving is aggressive, then there is no way you can do justice over there, right? And this aspect is very beautifully covered. I humbly request you to you know, get your hands on this in case you haven't heard that. And in very beautifully it says, when, when is there a dissonance in the society? When people who are innately tuned towards compassion, they are put in army. People who are innately aggressive are put in surgery. And this is where most of our problems start happening, right? So to conclude, few tips. It's very difficult to find out. And there is one organization in India called the Soul Temple who helps you to identify. It's a six months resident, uh, residential program they have, where they help you to identify your swabhav, which is your innate nature. What is the core chemical engineering you carry? And what is the work that you should be doing such that you can fulfill your destiny properly and you don't create a dissonance in the society. So this is where I end. As I told you, this belongs to you now. What you do is totally up to you. Uh, it's an evolution for most of us. I'll be an adding or deleting few things maybe in some other way. But this is where I end. Thank you so much. <laughs>